Hello and welcome to Ukraine in Flames, a special project brought to you by Ukraine Crisis Media Center, Ukraine Catholic University's Analytical Center and NGO Euro-Atlantic Course. My name is Oleksandra Tsikhanovska. I am the head of Hybrid Wolf Analytical Group at Ukraine Crisis Media Center. And today we will be talking about the issue that has been plugging so many of us from decision makers to a general public. How will the newly discovered atrocities committed by the Russian military military close to Kiev influenced the course of war. Will we see more decisive action from our Western partners? The fear of an open confrontation stalls some of the highly important decisions that would help Ukraine in the face of Russian aggression that includes many crimes against humanity and war crimes. But what if this confrontation has already started? We invited some high-ranking speakers, public officials and diplomats alike from Ukraine to discuss this issue. And they are Valery Chali, Ambassador of Ukraine to the United States in 2014-2019 and Chair of the UCMC Board. Pavlo Klimkin, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine in 2014-2019. Andriy Shevchenko, Ambassador of Ukraine to Canada in 2015-2021. Volodymyr Ohrysko, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Ukraine in 2007-2009, Serhii Rahmanin, a Ukrainian MP and member of Committee on National Security, Defense and Intelligence, as well as Taras Berezovets, Ukrainian TV host and YouTube blogger. And we start with esteemed Valery Chali, who gives an equally passionate and professional address on how the crimes against humanity committed by the Russian troops in Bucha, as well as in many other Ukrainian cities, manifest a war on the common values that we all share with Europe, and how such attacks should be repelled in a united manner. Dear friends of Ukraine, we're still under the attack of Russian troops, and 39 days we defend not only our country, we also defend European security and try to stop these troops, try to stop Russia. The new cases, criminal cases, the cases against humanity, the facts of genocide in Ukrainian cities, Bucha, Gostomel, Irpin, Chernigiv, Mariupol, demonstrated very clear that this is war not only against Ukraine. The ultimate goal of Russian regime to undermine international order, to attack freedom in the world, to attack our values. We now should reconsider the, our common efforts how to stop the enemy. You should act decisively. Together we can stop them. If not, you will be the next target. Don't make mistake. We understand with you that we are partners. We share the same values. We together, we thank for your support. But in this changing, changing of circumstances, we need not only defensive weapons, we need the really equipment that we can push out them is only way how to maintain peace in the heart of Europe. It's only way how to stop aggressors. It's only way how not allow them to change our life in the future. The only way be together, stand firm, shoulder and shoulder, and do this now. Please be decisive. Please support us, and we will win. Our next speaker, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Ukraine in 2014-2019, Pavlo Klimkin, takes the discussion further and emphasizes how NATO, even willing to avoid the direct confrontation with Russia, can step up its game. He addresses the key milestones that would define a more effective approach and the urgent necessity of proactive measures. Good morning, everybody, and thanks for standing with Ukraine. It's clearly time uh, to change policy towards Russia for NATO, for, for the Western world. Uh, the idea of having more of the same, uh, even it's really more, it's, uh, it's, it's not enough. 
So fundamentally, we need now a really proactive approach, even if uh, the NATO is not willing now to enter into direct confrontation uh, with Russia. And the milestones uh, of that approach could be, uh, firstly, no limit uh, military assistance, clearly defining that Ukraine should get uh, what uh, it needs in the sense of weaponry and in the sense of uh, logistics. Secondly, it's about a clear statement uh, uh, on further escalation of sanctions. If uh, Russia and Putin uh, go on, third, uh, it should be a clear statement uh, that the NATO is ready to invoke Article 5 if Russia uses uh, any weapons of mass destruction against uh, Ukraine or fundamentally raise uh, the level of atrocities. And fourth, uh, it should be a very clear idea that uh, NATO should get uh, proactive, clearly proactive and uh, simply declaring that it's not just about defending Ukraine, it's about uh, helping Ukraine to win. It's about going along. It's about... Uh, clearly understanding that uh, NATO security is Ukraine security and uh, the other way around. I've, I'm a physicist by education and one of my professors told me a story many years ago about Alban Einstein teaching uh, in the university and once he had exam in physics and uh, one of the students raised uh, his hand wavering and said but professor, these are the tasks you gave us two years ago. And Einstein said, well, but the answers are different. Uh, Ukrainian-Russian war has changed everything. And a uh, bold approach is needed because uh, Putin understands only sheer force. He also respects only sheer force. And it could fall short of a direct confrontation with Russia. But uh, the NATO needs now to consider a fundamentally bolder and clear approach towards, uh, towards Russia. It's really the only way forward, and it would serve the NATO well. And uh, alternatively, the lack of such approach would fundamentally backfire. Stand with Ukraine. The proactive approach of the Western partners is the investment in their own security, because as our next speaker, Andriy Shevchenko, ambassador of Ukraine to Canada in 2015-2021, argues the clash between them and Russia has already begun, with chemical attacks on European soil and with cyber attacks. Above all, Russia believes that it is waging a war not just against Ukraine, but against NATO as well. More directly from Mr. Shevchenko in a moment. NATO's support for Ukraine is uh, as practical and as pragmatic as uh, building a wall to protect your family from wild animals or building a dam to protect your village from a flood. Putin is not the source of the terrible, tragical war we are witnessing. In many ways, he is a reflection of the Russian ruling class, of the Russian military elite, and of the wide Russian public. If we look at the recent polls in Russia, 81% of the Russian population supports the invasion into Ukraine. More than 70% of the Russians believe that Poland would be the next stage of this Russia's offensive against the West. Putin's approval ratings actually have gone up after the beginning of the invasion. This means that even after Vladimir Putin is gone, it's not going to solve all the problems. We will have to deal with this existential threat for decades to come and maybe for generations to come. And 
that Russia believes it's already fighting a war not just against Ukraine, but against the United States of America, against NATO, against the West. If you think about the Russian chemical attacks on NATO soil, about the cyber attacks, if you listen to what the Russian propaganda machine tells its citizens right now, there'll be no doubt. Russia believes it's fighting a war against the West. And that is why there is no time for half measures. It's not a discussion about imminent threats or inevitable threats. This war, this conflict, this clash is already happening. And if someone in NATO, if someone in the free world right now thinks how we can limit casualties on the global scale, they should support Ukraine. If we are serious about limiting the territory of brutal, tragic military actions, we should think how we can support Ukraine. If we want to bring peace as soon as possible, everyone should support Ukraine. So it should be a very practical and a very pragmatic approach and a very practical and pragmatic decision. Let's make that wall stronger. Let's help Ukraine to win this war on behalf of the free world. Let's make sure that we can bring peace as soon as possible. Stand with Ukraine. Our next honorable guest, Volodymyr Grisko, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Ukraine in 2007-2009, elaborates on why the current war is a civilizational one and how Russia wages it on Ukrainian soil, but not just against Ukraine alone. He addresses the most crucial predispositions to our common victory. Let's find out what those are. Some politicians in the West still believe that uh, this Russian war is only against Ukraine. In my view, it's a very false perception. Russia uh, fights against Western values. This is civilizational war. Russia from one side and Western world from another one. Ukraine is only the first step. You can ask me, what is the reason for Russia to start this war? The answer lies in Russian nature. Because Russia inside is historically totalitarianism, slavery and fear. Russia outside is, once again, historically, aggressiveness, brutality and treachery. Where are we now? In my view, it is a very critical moment now. Everyone in the West should know, if Ukraine fails, next will be one of your countries. What do we need to win? Ukraine needs heavy weapons immediately, and the West must, I would like to repeat, must continue its economic war against Russia. In my view, these are two major preconditions for our common victory. Ukraine should destroy Russia militarily, and this is quite possible, and the West should destroy Russia economically. It is not because we are against Russia. It is not because we don't like Russia. It is because Russia today is the global threat. In fact, Russia should not be allowed to be this global threat again. It means Russia should not be in a position anymore to produce weapons to threaten her immediate neighbors or other countries. It should be our common goal. 
We should be successful if we are going to live in security and peace. Thank you. We move to a close-up with a powerful call from a famous Ukrainian TV host, uh, Taras Berezovets, on how the atrocities committed by Russians in Bucha and Derpin, north of Kiev, changed the situation. What does not just Ukraine, but all of us, need to prevent further acts of genocide akin to a new Srebrenica? Hello, my name is Taras Berezovets. I'm Ukrainian TV journalist and YouTube blogger. And I'd like to address to whom it may concern Ukraine is not only under attack. After atrocities which we saw on the northern outskirts of Kiev in uh, small towns of Bucha, Irpen and Gastomel, we should say these are not simple Russian military crimes. These crimes uh, have a clear connection with what we call uh, genocide. Genocide against Ukrainian nation, against Ukrainian people, against Ukrainian civilians. Pictures of uh, hundreds of uh, uh, Ukrainian civilians brutally killed by Russians uh, in uh, mass uh, graves um, in, in cities of uh, Bucha and Erpeny change this situation completely. Ukraine not only needs to close sky over our country, we need not defensive, we need offensive weapons. I think West should be aware of the fact that Ukraine could only be the first target of this megalomaniac uh, Vladimir Putin. He's not only going to destroy our country and uh, to commit acts of uh, genocide against Ukrainian people. He would also definitely go further to the Baltic states, to the Central and Eastern Europe, to Poland, uh, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia. Czech Republic and other countries should he only have a chance to. You should understand that uh, Ukrainian civilians are uh, experiencing enormous, enormous um, violence from uh, Russian occupiers. These are not simple acts of uh, uh, war against civilians. This is, has clear parallels, which we saw in, in the Balkans uh, in the 1990s. Srebrenica, uh, this is exactly the case you should uh, take a look upon, considering what's going on here in Bucha. Bucha and Irpeny are Ukrainian Srebrenica. Uh, uh, and we are definitely sure that uh, Vladimir, Hortz, Vladimir Putin hordes here in Ukraine committing these acts of uh, genocide not voluntarily. They have direct orders. They have direct order orders from their military command and their military command effectively re receiving these orders, orders from uh, Ministry of Defense and uh, from Kremlin. Uh, we cannot even imagine what's going on now on our temporary occupied territories in Crimea, in Donbass, in Kherson, uh, Zaporizhia, Mykolaiv, Donetsk and Luhansk uh, regions. Uh, you could only imagine the size of military crimes committed by uh, Russians in there. We want you to help Ukraine as soon as possible. Uh, the time then uh, you could put up with uh, Vladimir Putin military crimes is over. After Bucha, you should make right uh, decision to help Ukraine, like I said, with uh, offensive weapons. And as we wrap it up, Ukrainian MP Serhiy Rahmanin, a member of the Parliamentary Committee on the National Security, Defense and Intelligence, explores the parallels between the current Russian war and the beginning of World War II, urging to take a stronger stance on the aggressor to stop it from reaching beyond Ukrainian borders as it is bound to do. Some thought-provoking questions from him to end our today's episode. The biggest problem in the Western world, in particular the European countries, such as the United States, the Great Britain and the United States, they don't do not understand the scope, the character and the scope of what is happening. Any historical historic analogy of Kulga, but in fact, the thing that is happening now, it is actually the history of the Second World War. Now, the European countries, in general, the Western countries, they say about that they are ready to give Ukraine the necessary help, in particular, військово-технічно, але вони за будь-яку ціну готові робити все, щоб уникнути Третьої світової війни. Якщо ми подивимося на історію, 
то насправді Друга світова війна почалася не 1 вересня 1939 року, коли Гітлер перейшов кордони Республіки Польщі. Вона почалася 1 жовтня 1938 року, коли Гітлер перейшов кордони Чехословаччі. І те, що тоді подавалося як спроба уникнути наступної світової війни, насправді було її початком. Хижака ворога не можна умиротворювати. Часткова допомога, така, наприклад, допомога, яку намагався Захід надавати Польщі, не зупинила Другу світову війну, не зупинила вторгнення Гітлера на Європу і окупацію величезної частини Європи. Те, що відбувається зараз, це Третя світова війна, вона вже почалася. І якщо хтось цього не визнає де Юре, де-факто вона почалася. І вона триває в центрі Європи, вона триває на теренах України. Україна дуже вдячна західним партнерам на допомогу, за допомогу. Але смішно виглядає історія про те, що а, с, Захід пробує уникнути Третьої світової війни. Вона йде. Дуже смішно виглядають спроби пояснити нам, яке зброєння нам потрібно для того, щоб захистити ворога. При всій повазі до дуже шанованої зброї, такої як Джавілін Лав чи Стінгер, це не та зброя, якою зупиняють війну. Для цього потрібні набагато більше речі, набагато важливіші і складніші речі. Ті речі, які допоможуть зупинити ворога тут, для того, щоб він завтра не опинився в Варшаві, в е, е, Таліні, в Вільнюсі, а далі, далі скрізь. З, закрите небо видається нашим західним партнерам неймовір, неймовірною річчю, яка може спровокувати ворога. Такі, до такої саме риторики вдавалися західні лідери в 1938 році, і в 1939-му вони отримали війну. І справжня війна почалася тільки після того, як почали бомбити Англію, і після того, як було завдано удари по Перл Харбор. Мені цікаво, в Лондоні і в Вашингтоні чекають ракетних ударів по їхніх територіях, для того, щоб вони зрозуміли, що третя світова триває, і що їхня віддаленість від театру бойових дій не означає, що до них не дотягнуться. Путін розуміє тільки мову сили, і у заходу достатньо сили, щоб це зробити. Якщо він не готовий закривати небо України, він точно має давати нам те, що буде захищати цю країну, всю Європу і весь цивілізований світ від ворога. There's been a lot to digest and we sincerely hope that you have been happy and appreciate this episode of Ukraine in Flames. If you do, please like and share this video. You've been watching the special project delivered to you by Ukraine Crisis Media Center, Ukraine Catholic University's Analytical Center and NGO EuroAtlantic course. Please subscribe to our channel to stay informed. And in the meanwhile, remember that everything is going to be Ukraine.